Welcome to Integration TV, the first English television for Somalis around the world. I'm Paula Nalea. On today's program, we are broadcasting from Turkey, Istanbul, as Somalia moves forward in Somalia's New Deal right here as over 50 delegates come together to discuss the future and the progress of our country. Right after the break, the President of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, will join us to discuss his hope and dream for the country that he took over four years ago. We'll return right after these messages. Gortad uhi lo dada kan kaga o ad ga alo te dulki ho yo ad edi o kuroh de ilahi koma na iste Ocean Airlines aya kule ina keno ina soka kia Ocean Airlines wa diarat Somaliet o diar ko go ah dal iski dal ko ho yo wa hai an ko ta hai Ocean Airlines wa diarat de kelia. ee afri ee labata ka saa ka ibsa kerto shabaka da internet ka wa isbadal ki li sugu yi kusso du wada nola shamaan ee rhe gura aga dula ya Ocean Airlines ku bixi kana ibsa shabaka da ocean slash airlines dot com If you're looking for real Somali food, look no further than Bilal Restaurant Toronto's hidden secret offers you a cozy comfortable environment with freshly cooked Somali food Enjoy your choice of delicious Somali rice, steak chicken, and their specialty of various roasted goat meat. Bilal Restaurant is located at 321 Ruxdale Boulevard at Martin Grove. Bilal Restaurant, your place for real Somali food. At Doli Law, our clients play a significant role in every step of decision making. I'm Mohamed Doli. My farm has been serving in the Toronto communities over a decade in different areas of law. Our seasoned lawyers have been serving our clients with passion, commitment, and empathy. Dolly Law is committed to obtaining the best possible outcome for you and your family. Dolly Law, serving the community with excellence in Toronto and now in Ottawa. Contact us today. Juba Express is the fastest and most cost-effective way to send money to loved ones. Guaranteed best rates and low transfer fees. Secure, fast, safe, and reliable. Send money from any of our networks to any of our networks and experience our five-minute money transfer guarantee. Visit any of our 21 locations across Canada. Juba Express, experience service beyond the ordinary. Welcome back to Integration TV. Right now joining me is the president of Somalia. He has been named the Time Magazine's most influential 100 people in the world in 2013. And he joins us now to talk about the progress and the hope for Somalia. Welcome, Mr. President. So it's been four years since you've been in office. How is life in office? Well, it was uh, very difficult in terms of my uh, tasks and duties. And it was very good for Somalia made uh, tangible progress in many areas. Of course, the, what we were supposed to do in those four years was the, the task, the list of the tasks was too long and the time was too short. We did something that Somalia has not done uh, almost in the past 20 years or in the past 12 years that the country was in a transitional government system. Of course, we're still doing what, we, what the transitional governments were supposed to do. All the tasks we're doing right now, although we are not transitional government, is a transitional task. Review of the constitution, electoral processes, reform of the justice, reform of the uh, expanding the governance system through, so, throughout Somalia, rebuilding the security institution. All these were the tasks for a transitional system to do by the time a country goes out of the transition, it, it must have all those necessary institutions in place. Uh, it was very unfortunate that we come to a place where still, literally the country is, was in transition, but we have taken responsibility of a non-transitional government, sovereign state, with a lot of responsibility and accountability to the rest of the world and to Somalis as well. So the task was not easy, but uh, we are happy where we are right now. We do believe that uh, many of the things there were better ways to do, but the level of achievement that we had 
it's something that if we objectively evaluate, uh, something has not, that has not been done in 12 years of transition. So your party is called the Peace and Development Party. Have you achieved those objectives? You know, the idea of establishing BDP, a Peace and Development Party, and many other parties was to, to push or to pressure the transitional government to establish or uh, the, up, the next government which it happened that I'm leading, uh, the, the first in the transitional government, to establish the political party system and to establish the culture of the political pluralism. Uh, my, my, my party is still there, but it, is, it has everything, but it's lacking, as any other party, the legal framework that makes the party a, a legal entity of its own. Now it's an association that has been get together by people who believe certain common principles and practices. And it's not mine only, there are other political parties inside Somalia and there are other... What do you say to diaspora who say that we haven't accomplished the peace part of that? Well, in the uh, Peace and Development Peace and Development Party uh, has accomplished it. It became a forum, platform, where the intellectuals, the young people, people who have a positive intention and positive pressure for Somalia to get together and dialogue among them and then get a common understanding and vision about Somalia. Circumstances were very difficult, but at least these are mainly PDP consists of young people who believe Somalia, number one, who believe that clan is not the best option or the best venue that produces political leaders of the nation. Do you think 4.5 has caused a lot of divisions in our country? Uh, yes, I do, and I have recently uh, articulated for the... Many young people ask that question because we didn't grow up in Somalia. It is not, it's not that I, I, I believe the 4.5 or I believe the clan system, but sometimes in a world like Somalia you have to be very pragmatic uh, and you have to do what's possible. And at the end we call the politi politics... No, 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 the politics is, is always the art of possibilities. We talk and do what's possible today, not what is going to be possible 10 years later. So today, the Somalia of today, what we have been willing and we have strived hard was to create a conducive environment that allows the people to do normal politics, universal suffrage. But because of the circumstances, we've been, we've been in a war, an international war, not a local or Somali war. We've been, we lost the culture of statehood after 25 years. We'll, we have a problem of trust mm -hmm. among our people yes. and between the people and the state. So, so all these complexities put together has just become a roadblock to us to reach that level. But the question is, if... So if that's the case, do you think that maybe we start with reconciliation? Of course, reconciliation is an ongoing process. It does, it's not an event. That what do you say to critics who say that has not happened and that there's still a lot of fractions of society? W one of the major reasons that uh, the recon full reconciliation has not happened in Somalia is because there are no institutions that manage the reconciliation. The reconciliation, it cannot happen. And it cannot do you happen. To set something no, no, and it cannot happen in the context of clan or all this. Reconciliation itself needs a state institution, whether local or national. That was the missing element. Right now we've established it and we do have uh, the next term, whoever is there, has all the infrastructure to do the reconciliation. Let me give you one example to make the people in the diaspora to understand why state institutions at the local and national level are important for the reconciliation. For example, if a criminal today in a remote village in Somalia take his gun and kill someone, 
that person is called a criminal, a killer, a murderer. These are the names. But in our context, he doesn't have that names. He is clan X, kill it, clan Y. Yeah. And then someone else on revenge is killed and the whole thing goes out. If, that, if there is an institution that takes that person, brings him in front of the justice, and he's been taken with the reserve, the solution would have been the reconciliation needs institutions that can protect it. Otherwise, sleeping bags, sleeping bag would always be. And that was the practice that we, the experience that we had. Do you recognize regions that want to separate from Somalia? No, not at all. When I was coming to, when I was running for the presidency in 2011, in 2012, my manifesto was the six pillar policy framework. And one of these pillars was the, the unity of the country. And we have been working the unity and still working. The level of this unity. Do you think it's possible? It is possible. It is possible. Are they willing, the parties that need one to The parties are willing. Only the level of mistrust that happened, the, the predatory culture of our past state, and some of the abuses that happened in the past. Do you but, think the government would apologize for something like that? Well, we will do whatever is necessary to, to unite Somalia. We do not shy away if in the name of the government something has to do or some statement has to be made, but we are sure that we will get the unity because of that statement of, or because of that action. The Somali government has no choice but to do and we will do it. Are Somali girls being shipped to Saudi Arabia to work as housemaids? It's, it's a matter of misinformation. There, are, there is no correlation between the, the support Saudi Arabia is giving to Somalia and, and this issue. We have, have they granted visas? No, no, we, we have been, no, no, we have been pursuing this issue of Saudi Arabia opening its mar labor market for Somali people. Our girls, they go from Somalia and Tahrib, in, on Tahrib, went through Yemen. They are mistreated in Yemen. Some of them, we don't know where they ended up. And they reach Saudi Arabia and they stay there illegally having no rights at all. What right now we're talking about, not only girls, but Somali young people, to go there legally and lawfully under the supervision of the government. And but not as maids? Not as what? Maids, like houseworkers? No, of course. Because yeah. the diaspora are concerned that many of the young girls mm -hmm. uh, may be subject to a lot of the abuse that's been documented by Saudi homeowners. Mm -hmm. um, so they're concerned that this could happen to young Somali girls that take these visas to go there. Well, I don't believe that this will happen because they will be going there in the, a relationship and agreement between two governments. And we are fully responsible to look after their uh, interests and protection throughout there and they will be working there. There are Somali girls and boys in Saudi Arabia right now. So will now. they grant visas to those ones to work or are they going to bring new ones? No, they will grant those ones to work after going through certain set of procedures and they will of course get new ones from Somalia. And not only girls, we're talking about drivers, we're talking about nurses, both men and men. We're talking about many other people who can serve. It's not only the girls. What is your message of hope for the Somali diaspora? Of course, you know, uh, we have two issues that we need to, to, to both of them evaluate. One is the diaspora has been the lifeline for Somalia for a long time. The $100 sent from Minnesota, uh, Columbus, Ohio, and Toronto, and London, Stockholm, was the base of the life for many Somali families because of this Many uh, students have went to school. There was no public school. There was no public health system. So the diaspora has always been the lifeline for Somalia. And still, and today, after the progress happening in Somalia today, it is the Somali diaspora who is investing again. You go to the universities, there are diaspora people. You go to the hotels, which are mushrooming in Somalia everywhere, you, you see it's the diaspora money and the diaspora know-how, the supermarkets, IT companies who are now uh, developing in Somalia. And there are now a couple of uh, IT companies who have been contracted by the Somali government 
to do services for the Somali government. So all this is a, we have a two generations that are lost education, two generations who never went to school. So now the doctors, the engineers we have from Somalia, of course, are there, but the ones from diaspora is a very complementary and supplementary for the reconstruction and the rebuilding of Somalia. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. President. It's been great speaking with you, and we look forward to hearing more progress from Somalia. This is Integration TV, the first English television for Somalis around the world. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to subscribe below and support our programs as we bring you new narrative about Somalis around the world. Take care.